Okay, so let's look at this example again. Now, this time, let's have a look. We can't use the sine rule, can we? Because we don't have a side and an opposite angle. We don't have them. For the sine rule, we must have a side and an opposite angle involved. And we don't have any of that here. So we're going to have to do something else. We're going to have to use the cosine rule. Okay? The cosine rule is a little bit longer than the sine rule. Basically, it says that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay? That is the cosine rule. And you have to know that the cosine and the sine rule are both given to you in the front of your exam paper. I still want you to know them because it's worth remembering these things yourself rather than having to flip back in that exam paper. So, let's use it. Let's do the example. Here we go. So, let's... This is obviously A. Okay? This is obviously our angle A. It doesn't matter what we call B and what we call C. So we'll just call that B and that C, just for the purposes. It doesn't actually matter. Okay? It doesn't matter at all. So, we find that A squared must equal B squared, 25 squared, plus C squared, 14 squared, minus 2 times 25, times 14, times by cos of A. Okay, so let's do all those things. So A squared equals, let's do 25 squared plus 14 squared. 25 squared plus 14 squared is 821 minus 2 times 25 times 14 700 so minus 700 cos a okay we need to do some rearranging here oh no we know we know what a is sorry we know a is 32.4 okay so, 8, 2, 1, minus 700 times cos of 32.4 gives us that a squared must equal to 30. So a must equal the square root of 230. So, square root of 230 is 15, give or take, 15.1. So, we know that this side is 15, which is what we expected, because this is the third time we've looked at this triangle. So, that equals 15. So, literally, we just plug it all straight in. Okay. Now, we're going to look at one... Now, what we do to finish it off, we... Now, know all the sides and an angle, we can actually just use the sine rule, which is slightly easier, and we can find out the remaining angles, we can then finish it all off. So we've just used the sine rule to find one of the angles, and we find the other angle purely from it having to add up to 180. Okay? The other time we'd use the cosine rule, as well as... Let's just leave it on there. If we didn't have this angle, and we were just told all the sides, that side the other time we'd use the cosine rule. We basically use the cosine rule when we have either just all the sides, or we don't have that opposite angle. Okay? So if we just have all the sides, and we need to find an angle. So let's say we want to find this angle here. We'll call it A. Okay? So we call this A. So this now becomes little a, and then b and c. It doesn't really matter. So, this time we know that 14 squared, this is to find the angle, we just put it all in again. 
14 squared equals b squared, so 25 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 25 times 15 times cos of a. So let's do it all. 14 squared is 196. 25 squared plus 15 squared gives us 850. Minus 2 times 25 times 15, 750 cos of a. Now we're going to need our algebra, okay? We're going to have to take 850 away from both sides, aren't we? And that's going to cancel there. So, 196 minus 850 gives us minus 650 4 equals minus 750 cos A. Now we're going to want to divide both sides by minus 750. Okay, now cancel off there. So we get minus 654 over minus. 750 minus is cancel equals cos a. So 654 divided by 750 is so which equals 0 0.872. So then a the angle will just equal cos minus 1 0.872. which is just 29.3. So we find that that angle is 29.3. And again, now we found that out, we can use the sine rule to find the other angle, one of the other angles, and then the 180 adding up to find the others. And that's it, that's the sine and the cosine rule. So, have a go, the first set of questions will be to do just with the cosine rule and then there'll be some ones at the end which are cosine and sine rule and you'll need to work out for yourself which one to use to answer the question. Okay, and when you've done that we're going to come back and we're going to finish trigonometry off, we're just going to look a bit more in depth on what sine and cosine actually are.